thing. Are there songs you hear that you're like, either I wish that, I wish I, I had that song or damn, I, um, I would have killed that song? I Want to Run to You was written specifically for me. Yo. What? And um, I was at Giant Records at the time, and uh, the girl, Cassandra Mills, who ruined my career, uh, <laughs> she vetoed it. Yeah, that's the energy we're on this week, Mr. Magic Vibes. I like that. It's good vibes. Welcome to another week of We Sound Crazy, your backstage pass to all things music and culture. Phil Yanair is in the building. Claude Kelly is definitely in the building. Chuck Harmony is in the building. What's going on, guys? And there is an empty seat over there. <laughs> I, I just, and it's not for a special guest. I mean, it's for our co-host, and maybe he'll show up. We don't know. You know? There's no bacon in the building. There's no bacon. <laughs> There's, There's no, no bacon. bacon in the building. <laughs> but, but we, we do can... have a really, really special guest, a, a legend. An extremely Super special, special guest. guest. Hello? I, I'm going to tee this one up, and I, this, I'm honored to have her with us today. Uh, she is a Grammy nominee. A winner of the Chicago Music Award, Lifetime Achievement Award, also an AMA winner. That's American Music Award for y'all that don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, also, she won a Soul Train Music Award and many mm -hmm. other awards, Billboard number one records on multiple formats. She's got an actress, so much, a mother, so much, so much, so much. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for the legend, the great Mickey Howard is in the building. <laughs> Hey. hey, 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 how you doing? Thank you for coming and spending some time with us. Oh, it's, it's my pleasure. I'm so happy you asked me. Oh, my goodness. This is like, this is actually a legend. This is a, no, a for real, for real legend. Know, you know, we toss that word around legend we too do. loosely, too right? Much. Way too loosely. Way too much. It's, it's, it's just, it's unbelievable how often we, but this is literally, we're sitting with the legend. So thank you, yeah, Mickey yeah. Howard. This means the world. It does. I'm honored. I yeah. am honored. So what? I just I don't know where I even want to start. <laughs> <laughs> I want to start in Nashville. You're here. You're doing shows. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, at the City Winery here in uh, Nashville. Tell me, tell me how that's going to, now. At, uh, regular. Right. <laughs> 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 I mean, you're doing a lot of shows now. I mean, I always have. Yeah, yeah. You mm -hmm. know, this is the thing because you, you, sometimes you guys say out of sight, out of mind, mm -hmm. and you think that we're not working. And um, if I wasn't, I'd be at Walmart. <laughs> You right. know, checking you out or something. Right, right, right. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, 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 this is what I do. This is my life, my life's work. I've never done anything else. You know, I'm a musician, an artist, I, and I do art, so I work all the time. I love that. And it's important for people to hear that because people really do feel like yeah. like you do music and then you put it down and do something else. But it's... it's I mean, that's perfectly wonderful for those that do. For those that do, but it's actually life work. It's your calling. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. I wouldn't, you know, still be here. Yeah. Do you remember your first musical memory? I was born into this. Come on, man. Mm. Both of my parents, you know, extremely amazing singers. My dad was in the Pilgrim Jubilees. All of his brothers were singers. They were, the whole group was uh, brothers. And then my mom, Josephine Howard from the Caravans, yes. which is, you know, it, it, when I grew up, that was, yeah, everybody came from gospel, you know. Mm. And it was a big thing. So, yeah, and, and my grandparents, my great grandfather was a vaudevillian. Really? <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. He gave me my harmonica and, um, Washboard, you know, we're from Memphis. Wow. Mm -hmm. You have a string of hits um, dating back to the 80s. Um, did Chicago have something to do with the, your sound or how you perceive music or how you approach music? Well, um, I could say yes and no. I mean, you know, Chicago, especially uh, African American or you black in Chicago, you the, in the 60s and 70s, music was everything. It was coming out of all of the taverns. and They were open when you go home from school and music is blaring out. Mm -hmm. And out of the stores and the five and dime, everywhere was music. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, you know, and, and coming from Memphis and Chicago, um, steeped in the blues mm -hmm. and jazz. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the R&B thing just sort of popped up because I was young. Mm -hmm. So in your mind, were you intending to be like a jazz singer first? Yes. Okay. But it wasn't jazz. When I was growing up, it was just... Music. Music. Yeah, we, we, it sort of started being people 
distinguish distinguishing different um, genres. Genres. Mm, like, okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> if you say if you say that's what it's called, cool. Okay. I'm just singing these songs, right? And I was I was shocked when I hit the charts and they were like R and B. I was like, really? Mm. That's okay. <laughs> Well, well, well. Oh, wow. Look at this. Our co host decides to show up. And he's got vinyl in his hands. Party so for the <laughs> party. <laughs> oh, my God. Ladies and gentlemen, Timon Bacon has entered the building. Bacon for making. Bacon okay. for making. But at least you come with something important in your hand. And he wants his sign. He wants those, <laughs> those relics. <laughs> <laughs> Mickey Hello, Howard, this Howard. is Timon Bacon. He's the fourth co host of We Sound Crazy. Hi. He's hey. the diva of the group, as you can tell. <laughs> How are you? You know, Bacon for Megan got a job. So, <laughs> okay. You know. Good to Come see on. you, Timon. Good to see y'all. Now, we, ju- we actually just started talking about the beginnings in, in yeah. jazz in Chicago and Memphis. Yeah. That's probably two of the most influential music cities I'd say in the country. Mm-hmm. Memphis and Chicago, respectively, and together. So it's like, the, I would say the bloodline of music that, that runs through your whole... It's, that's crazy. Listen, I was in Chicago recently, and it's always musically a great time going mm-hmm. there. Just the... Like yeah. the, the record shops. Um, they still got record shops. Listen, yeah. the the what the one record shop in Hyde Park. Yeah, my God, I lost my mind in that. You spent too much money. Like way too much money. <laughs> um, but just just the 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 culture of Chicago. I love going to Chicago and like during the summertime and just yeah, all of that is just amazing. It's Music great. everywhere, all yeah. over. <laughs> Do you have a favorite city um, besides obviously Memphis and Chicago that you just like? You speak to you. I love Newark, New Jersey. Come on, Newark. I'm from I New York, so that's right on the corner. I love it. I have a good time. I lived there for a while. I just love it. Newark is, I'm talking about, uh, that's Faith Evans. That's Whitney Houston. Yeah. That's, mm. it's, it's so it's a black. Lot of people. It's so black. Yeah. I love it. It's a good black, you know? Yeah. Mm. I it's like so it. black. It's a good black. It's a good black. I like that. It's, it's a good black. Yeah, it's a good black. Yeah, I like that. I'm a, I want to go back, because last night I had the pleasure of seeing you perform. She was incredible. Yeah, mm. fill us in. Fill us in, and I got to tell you, one of my favorite songs, and you don't even know this, but I'm going to just hit play and just give the audience a little preview of one of my favorites in your catalog. I've been trying to tell myself I don't need Timeless. Timeless. What do you remember She's about... Like, I mean, <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> what do you remember about recording Baby Be Mine? That's one of oh, my yeah. favorites. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was touring a lot, heavily, and uh, I would record on the weekdays, Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. And We recorded in Philadelphia. Uh, the producer was Nick Martinelli, who I adored. He was so fun. He's retired now in um, Miami somewhere. Um, the singers, oh, everybody was so great. A lot of them are passed on now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the saxophone player was this really cool guy. I think he's the same one on Love Under New Management. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah, it was cool. What What do you remember about that time? Just because I always say I was born like I'm, I'm an '86 baby, so I was born just as you were really starting to take off. So I feel like I kind of missed. I, I of course I grew up came of age in the '90s, but um, I always say that I was born in the wrong decade because I wanted to be like present and there when you all were like really killing it back then and you still killing it. Um, but what do you remember about the eighties and just that, that time in R and B? Um, we had a chance. Mm. I remember we had a chance. And we had a chance. We had a chance to do something great mm. and, and to, um, submit, submit our legacy and to, um, stamp our culture. And um, we had a chance. Do you feel like that's not the same now? Absolutely not. Mm. All this degradation mm. is disgusting. Mm. You know, and we sit back and go, huh, yeah, it's, just, it's not us. I mean, every culture has some of that. But yeah. to put that out and say that represents us and re- represents who we are mm. and it represents our women and mm. our girls, it's, it's atrocious. Mm. It's atrocious. It's, it's, we... God, I mean, what the Be- Bessie Smiths and Billie Holidays, what they fought and sacrificed their lives for uh, to give this some integrity. Yeah. Mm. And mm. what these children are doing and young people and some old people, you know, you can't sing unless you're wearing your underwear. True. And it doesn't yeah. matter how old you are. Right. You know, it's not right. No. And it does not represent us. 
Mm. It's not our culture. Our true culture is being pushed to the back, and uh, we had a chance to uh, represent ourselves and, and be a real part of the universe. Mm. Mm. There, there's so many debates about that, about where black music is going or where it has gone. Mm. Is there something that you feel like is the, is the main contributing factor to why it's that way now? We naked. <laughs> we got clothes on, damn it. I mean, really- and with, with minimal amount of talent. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's, that's what The I think. talent is behind the scenes now. The talent is the... That's true. You mm-hmm. know, producers and everything yeah. like that. And, and they put anything in the front and call it talent. Mm-hmm. And, and, and um, um, what this is for, what our vessel is for, is to give joy, to bring peace, to help us through to the end times, you know, end times of our lives, end times of this age. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We are the spiritual voice. Mm-hmm. And yeah. and we are supposed to exemplify love and relationships and all the things that are part of life. Music is even supposed to be funny. It's mm-hmm. supposed to be funny. Yeah, and yeah. it has a sexual connotation that in its proper place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it's applicable to our lives. Mm-hmm. But in the state that it's in and, and the fact that, you know, we're sitting here and no offense to you, but you have to say to me, are you working? Mm. I would, would you say that to Lena Horn? Mm. My generation, our mm. Lena Horns, you know, our Aretha Franklins, and all, all those. But our '80s girls, we get no respect, none really. It's because all you saw was Whitney Houston, mm. and now the only representation we have that is accepted is Anita Baker, and it's that's not all. Mm. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Have you ever toured with Anita? No. Got it. That was a short answer. <laughs> I don't think she would want me to <laughs> anyway. Because, you know, she's a, a you know a, another type of artist. She's you know on her, her just she likes her space. Mm-hmm. Who who were some of those your counterparts? Phyllis like- Hyman. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got Gene Carn, mm-hmm. uh, Melba Moore, yeah. mm-hmm. Regina Bell, mm-hmm. um, so many. And you're talking about people that, like, this is not even about oh, relevancy or numbers. You're talking about people that, that, that yourself included, that, I'm talking about number one records, uh, world tours, all the exposure. So to not get the respect that you're speaking about is yeah. actually crazy. From our own. Yes, it's crazy to not be getting that respect from your own. You're talking about, I mean, Regina Bell, come on, like. All these people Stephanie are Mills. Stephanie yeah. Mills. Yeah, of course, Stephanie. And some of them were for, before me, mm. mm-hmm. you know. And we we held them in high esteem, and uh, it's just it's uh, weird now. So you don't feel officially here? You're saying you don't feel you get the respect you deserve? Well, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, you know, I respect myself absolutely enough yeah. for um, me not to feel anything regarding that. Mm. But I think it's bad for you. Mm. My tears not for me, because mm. I did my job. Mm. My tears are for you, that you know, and your children, because you, you guys are suffering, mm. and you have no idea. I sit here, I listen to you, just the little runs and the this and the that, and uh, you guys, this is this is for you to do. It's right mm. for you to bring me on the show. That's why I got up, even though I have to work tonight. <laughs> I don't do warnings and stuff. I'm, I, you know, you get to a certain age, you mature. Mm-hmm. You don't have to do certain things, and you don't. I don't like to come out and then, you know, you know, have interviews and people are asking me things that have, have no relevance. Mm, yeah, I don't like it, so I don't do it. Mm. But your friend, or friend, and I. So I was like, I'll go. I'll do. I'll talk. <laughs> We're honored. We I'm are honored. Yes. I'm honored, honored because you're on the right track. Mm. Yeah. That's that. That's a that's a big word of encouragement coming from you. Because I've been listening to your music for a very long time, mm-hmm. and it's important that we it's important that we make sure that the people that paved the way approve also yes. of the steps that we're making, so we're not messing up the legacy. Yeah, which is what I think you're saying. Yeah, I'm just like carry your carry your culture with pride. It's so rich. It encompasses so many people. Mm-hmm. We don't talk about how the Chinese and the black people. The Chinese were on the railroad. They got two cents a day or one cents a day, and they lived behind the slave quarters. Yeah. And we were very close. Mm. A lot of us, you know, people say, hey, what are you, what are you? Actually, there's a Chinese way back 
you know, great grandmama, grandmama. Wow. You know, very instrumental in our lives. We've come across every culture, and we even cocated some of their ways, and they even cocated some of ours. And now we act so estranged from each other. Mm. You know, that's not right. And that hurts the music, too. What are you talking about? It hurts, it hurts the, music. the music. Where do you think we get the music? Yeah. Mm. We get it from each other, yeah. right. from our experiences. Yeah. You know, we don't do anything, anything with, with, with one culture of people. We all do it together. You said, uh, who, what do I remember about that record? <laughs> um, in those days, you know, it was everybody working together, black, white, purple, and green. Mm. You know, and now it's just weird. Yeah. Also during that time, there was a, a young black executive named Sylvia Roan mm -hmm. who worked at Atlantic Records. Sylvia, I believe, was the head of black music at that time. Mm -hmm. What do you remember about working with Sylvia during that era? You said it, black music. Yeah. At that time, uh, my time, it was, you know, you had to cross over. And Sylvia was the head of black music and we couldn't cross her. You know, we couldn't cross her and go to the top and say, I want to do pop. You know, it's like, no. She did a great job with me. Mm -hmm. And... Um, with, with um, my records, because it was hard, you know, trying to fit me between Whitney Houston and disco and, you know, you know, then rap came right, you know, and I was sticking to my guns. I'm doing imagination and come share my love and baby be mine. We sat and we went through songs and songs and she sat with me. We'd have our time on Wednesdays and just be she and I and we just go through songs and mm. what do you like? I don't like it. You love it, I love it, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, we had to mutually agree, and, and I think that helped us to have records that people enjoyed. A proper music person. Yeah. You know, many people talk about Slippery Rome, talk about those days where they sat with her and just went through records and got, to me, I talked about it, yeah. about just feeling the, the, the personalized care from her. Um, that's also missing. That made now. me jealous to me. Really? <laughs> you were like, uh -oh. I'm like, wait a minute. No, no, no wonder I like her so, so, so I love her music. I do. Yes, Sylvia. Yeah, yeah, Sylvia was special. And she yeah. came from the old school. She was young from the old school, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, she did her job. She, she was so happy. Uh, years ago, when your movie came out on TV One, your biopic, I saw her in the, in the office when she was it's still an epic. But she was so happy. She's like, I'm in the movie. I, I think Lisa Ray's playing me in the movie. Or something. Yeah. She, was so, she was so excited and so proud. And just she was, had nothing but great things to say she about it. She came to the, to the premiere. We were so excited. She looked so cute. Yeah. We, 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 um, I talked to her before I left, before I left L.A. to come here. Yeah, I tried to get her to go to Shaka's party with me. <laughs> oh, Shaka's, Shaka's famous, was it seven? She just she turned, turned 70, 70, right? Yeah. I heard it was a good time. Yeah, it was, it was such a good time I left. <laughs> it was a little too good a time. I was like, who's all these people? <laughs> <It was> like... <laughs> yeah. So so speaking of Shaka, what is and and of course, if you've seen the movie and if you've followed your career as much as we all have, we know that Shaka is a very important person in your life. What is something that you've that she's kinda I guess taught you or just kinda you've been able to kinda take from her? I mean, apply it to your own life or your career. So much. You know, she's uh, like a big sister. Yeah. Um, so much. From what perfumes we buy, to, you know. Yeah. <laughs> We're like, oh, girl, are you sure this new town for a white girl? <laughs> you know. <laughs> and she likes me to come over and cook. You know, like, you know, we like gravy. Yeah. <laughs> On everything. On gravy? <laughs> and, Dressing and stuff like that, you know, that we can't get everywhere. So, you know, she likes me to cook. and But I've learned perseverance from her. Mm -hmm. I've learned that you must do the work. Mm. You know, a part, part of the, the things I've learned from her made me get up and come here today. Because if you, you want, you know, things like this to go on and, you know, it was important, and you, you got to get up. You got to yeah. get up. You got to do the work. Yeah. You know, I've seen her take 5 a.m. flights, you know, before she was doing, the, now she's doing the private jets, you know. Uh, I would be like, girl, hell no. <laughs> <You know? laughs> you lazy. I don't give a fuck. I'm like, yeah. You know? But, yeah, and do all the things that you must do yeah. to stay in this business. And I, I mean, I've seen her hurt and I've seen her triumph. You know, mm. she's got like 10, 11 Grammys, mm. you know, and, and then it's, this, every year they put her up for the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I've seen her be disappointed, you know. And keep moving and keep 
going and I've seen things get better and better and better. I've seen her raise her children. I, we've done it together. Our children are all like cousins, best friends, mm-hmm. uh, grandchildren, great grandchild. You know, things to aspire to. You must have somebody in your life that you look up to and yeah. over. Mm. That's good. You mm. know, so she's been that for me. And, and um, I'll say, because I've heard her say this to me, I've been a good friend to her. She says, you're my best friend. You're such wow. a good friend. Nothing makes me feel better. Yeah. Mm. Especially in this industry. So. Especially in this industry. That's the best compliment. Yeah, yeah. it is. Is, it there, is. is there someone that has come behind you that you feel like you've been able to kind of... Mentor? Mentor. I them. mentor so many artists. I just... I can't tell them. By the time I'm done mentoring them, there's so much an artist. That they, they, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to ride the bus. So you got to ride the bus, baby. No. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I have several artists. Uh, my, my nephew, Corey Walker, uh, another artist from Chicago, Cal, Marshall, my daughter, Caitlin Howard, my son, Brennan. He doesn't let me mentor him. He's totally on his own. He yeah. does his thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shout out to Brandon. Brandon. Can, we talk about, can we talk about, because oh, Brandon, Brandon, I've known since I started writing in the business. So uh-huh. I started, I, I got in the business songwriting before we became a band. But I, I don't know even know who connected me to Brandon. I, mean, I think it was an A&R. But... We wrote so many songs together mm. oh, okay. back in like the 2004, really five, talented. six, seven. And I'm talking about, we would, I would fly to LA to work with him. He'd come to New York. We worked together. We saw him at an event yeah. like last year, the year before with the Shandellas, with, with Deanna Williams and all of them. But Brandon is really smart, really talented, and was one of the people that kind of showed me the ropes when I got in this wow. business. That's so cool. Yeah, that's a cool, 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 cool musician and a cool guy. Good person. That's good. Oh, you, you see what you get to from. Yeah. Get to from. <laughs> Do you have a favorite Shaka Khan song? Ooh. Oh, I really love, I mean, I like a lot of them, but my really favorite is Clouds. Mm. I love mm. Clouds. Mm. We can play Clouds right now. I'll jump up and start dancing. And like, we can play Clouds. <laughs> <laughs> as, as we play Clouds. As we play Clouds. It. Oh, it's yes. so good. It's so good. And she can deliver that yeah, still. live. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's like, wow, wow. Like, how the fuck? Yeah, that whole naughty album. How do you is do just that? Nuts. Rain. Crazy. Rain. Oh. It's gonna rain. I have chills rain. right now. Rain. <laughs> Come on, that's a record that right is, there. Uh, okay. No, no, tell me. <laughs> it's, wow. it's, it's, it's the singing. It's, it's, it's the un- it's everything. unapologetic singing that I miss, that I love about that yeah. and that I miss now. It's like, when we work with artists now, there's always there's always this fight to, to, to get artists to, to use their whole well, voice now. That's true. And I didn't realize it until recently because, you know, you're only as good as what you, what you see out there. To, mm-hmm. to, to your point about us doing ourselves a disservice culturally, we're at the point now where most of the artists that are really in the present have about a five, six, no range. And what that's, it's cool, it might sound cool, but then when little kids hear it, you don't know that you can belt or hit high yeah. notes or you whistle tones or air, use air in your voice. And so a lot of times you're trying to really teach people how to use your voice for the first time as opposed to yeah, hearing that's that. Yeah, they don't, no one has any training anymore. No training. When, um, when I entered show business, we definitely had training. Mm. Um, I took dance lessons at Fred Astaire's dance studio. Um, they were $8 a class. It was like, you didn't have free time. Mm-hmm. You know, like they do now, it's weird. We took voice lessons. Sometimes mm-hmm. I had voice lessons from uh, Zeth Riggs, who was the top man in the in the country. Um, and sometimes they were just voice lessons from the lady down the street that yeah. did voice, bing, 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 bing. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, then there's no training. And, and we had to do... Um, Stuff like uh, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Mm-hmm. If Peter Piper picked, they don't do that. Yeah. These people don't even speak English. Yeah. I, I I don't even know what they're saying. I watch everybody and everything because I love culture. I love art. I mm-hmm. love everything. You know, I love the young people doing their thing, man. And it trips me out because sometimes I have to go back and listen again and see what did they say. What mm-hmm. they saying? Right You're like you know, Carissa. And then I. I, tr- I the stuff they say. Oh, city girl. Oh, <laughs> I might have done some of them things. <laughs> <laughs> I had never come out of my mouth. <laughs> I was like, okay, so so I'm like trying to understand. Like, young people are more vocal about 
uh, their, their feelings. And I'm like, okay, this is as deep as your feelings go. Mm. You're feeling, yeah, because your body is young and it's craving sex because it wants to procreate. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to do that. So we can't be upset. Okay, this is what's on their mind and they're saying it and singing it. And how, what else do we do? Is there something, that, right? It's just something else to talk about, basically. And it's just the way you talk about it. Yeah, it's just, just the way. Like, now it's just so. They want it more, the more gut bucket. The yeah. better, but I like the one. What's her name? Sukiyana. I like oh, no. Sukiyana. <laughs> I like I like Sukiyana. <laughs> like some Sukiyana. I follow her on Twitter. I'm entertained. I like. I was like, you know, it's like one thing to have one mom's Mabley it, it, out the bunch, but a yeah. whole to make the whole oh, culture yeah. into mom's Mabley is crazy. Yeah, yeah, that balance. Yeah, yeah that's you know, true. poor little Mooney Love. <laughs> you know what I mean? Can't no one else say nothing else but just be raunchy at this point, yeah, right? Yeah. Wait, you, what she sing that song? Something about. Hours and Making hours? Making towers and things. Oh, yeah, sure. Hours and hours. Oh, hours and yeah. hours. So, yeah. so Money long. she's such a hour. good writer, too. She's she a great is. writer. Yeah. Great writer. Great writer. You about to play something? Yeah, I'm going to go back again. Why not? Just like Romeo and Juliet, our love is strong. And stronger will get like a hand in the mother's bosom endless. Come on now. That's what love is. That's a classic. Oh, With the one and only baby. Gerald Burt. Gerald. Yeah, we wrote that. Y'all were friends. Well, good friends. Uh, we wrote that on the phone. You know, it's funny about On the that. phone? We didn't have all of this that y'all have now. Mm, that's all. Awesome. <laughs> you wrote the song on, on the, the phone? On the phone. Yeah, we were calling back and forth. What do you think? Oh, yeah, yeah. Here's the second verse. Yeah, okay. Boom. Yeah. It was so cool back then. Um, we had a big argument because we recorded this song and they accidentally erased it. Mm. And it was a, a better version in our minds. Uh, they accidentally raised our vocals, and I was mad and everything. We were just cussing at each other. Yeah, 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 stupid shit. Go, go, go. go sit in the lobby. Fuck you then. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you know, I'm sitting in the lobby. Mm -hmm. Is it my turn yet? Mm -mm. Okay, let me know. <laughs> Literally, and this is what happened until then. I came in and did my part, and then they said, oh, well, it's not working with you guys uh, separate. So we faced each other, still mad at each other. Just that's why it sounds so like follow me up. Aggressive. <laughs> that's crazy. That's sometimes anger brings out that love. It was so yeah. funny. It brings out the passion. Yeah. It, just, it was yeah, it was so funny. But by the time we finished, we were laughing and everything was fun. He's another person, Gerald Lovert, that I feel like doesn't get. And he felt that way too. The he felt recognition that, way? that he deserves. Because yeah. He has a catalog that's just and and and, like, and a stage killer. Yes, and then aside from that, those two things like the writing, mm -hmm. the production, production like for sure. stuff he did on Anita, the stuff mm -hmm. I was listening to. Um, Rude Boys. Yeah, Rude, Rude Boys. Boys. I was yeah. listening to a Howard Hewitt song that yeah. he did the other day. I was just like, wow! Like this man was a an accomplished he, he writer. Very white. They yes. don't practice what you preach, and, all you, you know, and no one ever yeah. talks about that. You, you, because I think, you know, he was so soulful and yeah. and his father uh, boasts the same mm -hmm. issue. Uh, he's not held in any esteem mm. that, you know, we can appreciate. Like, you know, oh, mm. you didn't get all the Grammys and you didn't get all of this and that, you know. Um, but what you're supposed to get out of this is a life mm -hmm. and love, mm. um, expression of your passions you give and you take something spiritual. Mm. And people always want you to have all of the so-called uh, toys and yeah. things. But what you're really supposed to get is a life, mm. a real life. Uh, when you think about the people that started show business, you, it, as we know it today, it's only 108 years old, recording and things like that. They were trying to make a life. Mm. This wasn't built for you to rob the industry or just rob or rape the industry. You're not supposed to be like, I'm going to sing this song and write these songs and get billions and millions. It only happens to certain people, some people. If you get a good life out of here, that's all you can expect. I love that. That's so true. That's so true. Yeah, man. You know, people say to me all the time, you know, you should be here. Let me tell you something. I got close. I started hovering up around those areas, you know, the big time and everything. And I wasn't that accepted because I didn't do the things 
that mm. those people did. Mm. Okay. And I, wa- I wasn't able to make those kinds of sacrifices. I love my children. I'm having the babies. I'm getting married. I'm getting beat up. I'm getting all the things that life brings you. Mm. I didn't miss a moment of my life. I tried the drugs. They tried me back. I went on back to God. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> just life, a good mm. life. And I did it. And I'm not, I, don't, I don't think I'm through, but I can't say that I lived on the street or had a basket or anything. If, you, if those things happen, it's because you did something to cause it and you need to learn. I find that those are the best. Like, we always go by poor people like, oh, I'm going to pray for him. He probably could pray for you because I mm. feel like the spirit uh, of God is with the people that are lowly in heart and having the hard times. And mm. God is trying to help them. When you are on your path and you're doing okay, like any parent, God is able to say, you got to call me if you need me. Mm. You know what wow. I'm saying? These are the things is, I've, I've never had to hover around, you know, being homeless or anything or doing any other kind of work. And I do what I want to do and say what I want to say. And I got put out of the industry in terms of, what do you call that? Blackball. Black, blackballed. Mm-hmm. Because I'm a fighter. Why you, were you blackballed? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Well, but Mickey, because uh, you... And but it happened. It happened. It was good. It was mm-hmm. good for you? It was the best thing that could happen. Wow. Interesting that you say that. Why yeah. did you say that? Because I'm here today. I'm fine, fabulous, and happy. Okay. Yeah. I have my children, grandchildren. I don't know what life going to hold or whatever. I had all of the things that people have. You lose your parents, your brothers, your sisters. That's true. But I was able to weather the storm. And I'm happy. Mm. You know, so- I don't know a lot of people. It's so interesting you say that because you were talking about the 80s and how, you know, that people only saw Whitney Houston, right? And there's all these people there. But people don't really understand the kind of sacrifice it takes. Like you said, you were hovering up at that point and what you chose not to do or that you, you're happy because you lived a full life. People really don't really understand the sacrifices that go into the artist's life. And, oh, God, yeah. And I how am. much hard work and how many holidays and birthdays yeah. and anniversaries and christenings <laughs> and all that you got to miss. And just to do what you love. The, the manipulation. And then there's that. That's worse than everything. The Let's manipulation. Let's talk about that. The, you know, you're going to work four days in a row, not because you need the money, because the manager needs the money. Mm. So they put you on mm. these days, and then on the fifth day, you have no voice. Wow. Your throat is gone. And then in the sixth month, you know, she can't sing no more. Mm. Well, I don't see how I could. Mm. Right. I, I mean, I've known my friends, but, but vessels have burst in their vocal cords. You know, then you have family members that are, you don't know if they're family, they want your money, mm-hmm. everybody ain't got nothing because you got everything. You know, the jealousy. But for me, it's the manipulation. All the narcissists, you just bait. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You just bait. And every, how do you see? So many of us not have relationships. Because what you attract, once you have your senses about you, you're not going to deal with that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But we're young, and like we're watching, watching, not to talk about anybody's thing, okay? The young girls in the escape, and they ain't young, they're 50, you know, they medium. But, <laughs> medium. <laughs> but it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. It breaks my to heart. To watch them fighting the way they're fighting, you mean? I mean, I don't know if it's real fighting. It's just that this is how they got on. Mm. Now, now you can get Tamika's seasonings, and we know each one of them, and it came at the price of this. Yeah. Mm. I don't even, I don't know if it's real or not real, but I feel like if I was Latasha, I might want to kill myself. Mm. Everybody, you put your record out, now everybody's talking mess about you, you did this, the do, so you can be famous, so you can get money, so you can say I'm not hungry. I've never been hungry. Never. Mm. Never. Mm. Wow. And didn't have to do that. It's just... It, but it's what your hunger is for. Mm. Yeah. What advice would you give the group Escape? That's would, a good question. What, what would you say to, to them? To Escape. <laughs> 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 Listen to your band name and do that. No, I mean, they, everybody's like, I look at them and I say, I see, you see a lot of money. And you know, and you, I know what that comes with. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? They can deal with it. That's why they got it. But... It's not, um, it's not the best way, you know, but it's the way that they know, and it's the way that's happening today. Mm. It's what's going on. I mean, I've talked with Mona Scott. She sent a crew over, you know, and they want to do, you know, do we want to do whatever it is, uh, live TV, whatever. Reality TV. Rea- 
they, they always turn me down because I'd be like, what? They turn you down? <laughs> like, we're not doing that. Yeah. Yo, Mickey, we need you right now. Okay. Film somebody else because I'm busy. <clears throat> Get someone else to do it. I'm frying chicken. Do you see me frying chicken? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Put on your makeup. There's always somebody in your face and always somebody over there. And what do you what, what do you need? And then and then when you really need something or want something, ain't nobody around. That <laughs> That's true. True. It's true. So I mean, yeah, you gotta live your life, man. You gotta live your life. You gotta have a life. And if you don't have any life to put into your art. Then you become a vessel for other people that are just using you. That's so true. Mm. Which is also why, it's, also why it's good to take breaks so you can have life yeah. to live and things to talk about in your music. Besides that's what I'm that, telling that, you. That, that's that how you have something to talk about in your music. Mm -hmm. you gotta live. Life. Yeah. Like my new record, Miha, is it's called Miha because it's sister. Mm. Um, I decided, you know, I lost all my sisters. Mm. And I've been a sister to a lot of my girlfriends, you know, and they've been sisters to me. And people like to go around and call each other queen and all that. And that's good for you if you feel like you're a queen. But I don't feel like a queen. I don't want to do no queen things. I don't want to fight nobody. I don't want to do any of that stuff. I want to be a sister. Mm -hmm. I want you call me, you know, when you're in distress or you want to go eat lunch or you want me to come get your baby. I'm the auntie. I'm the fun. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm her. So I named the album Miha. And on this album is a song called Throw It Away. And it's by Abby Lincoln. It's written by Abby Lincoln, mm -hmm. another one of our fine artists that our, our culture uh, doesn't acknowledge. And she sacrificed. She sacrificed her career making cultural songs. Yeah. Um, and this is a song called Throw It Away. I love this song because it exemplifies how I feel today. Mm. And basically... You know, sort of my whole life. Like, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, how do you feel about your life, your art, your craft? You know, your business, everything. And I, I can honestly testify, God never left me. Mm. Even if I left Him. Yeah. Thought I was leaving. I'm just gonna see how it goes if I do it my way. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. Even when I left him, he never left me. Yeah. That's a song. I'm like, leave me alone, Lord. That's a whole song. I'm being right there. sinful. I'm being sinful. You see me being sinful, leave me alone, Lord. <laughs> Keep your hands wide open. Let the sun shine through. Cause you can never lose a thing if it belongs to you. Uh, throw it away. That's lush. New music yeah, from man. Mickey Howard. Oh, yeah. I love that. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. You can never lose a thing if it belongs to you. you yeah, I'm listening to the lyrics. Get some Abby Lincoln records. I mean, she writes some some dope stuff. I'm talking about that you all can relate to now. Yeah. yeah. You know, check her out. That was really? beautiful. I love to watch you listen to your music because a lot of artists who've been doing this for. Any amount of time, don't enjoy their music anymore. But it looks like you love, you still love your songs. Look, cause it was my, it's the memories and part of my mm. life, and it, I still want to cry about that because I mean that. Yeah, mm. yeah, I mean yeah. that. And um, the music is always for me. It's to uplift people or to say I, I identify with you. Your feelings are not solo, and and here's where we put them. Yeah. That's so, yeah. the connection of it all. Yeah. yeah. We will relate. Yeah, I, I've always admired one, your voice is just so, as you said, lush, it's so warm. It just, it really it just, it, it, when you sit down and you listen to a Mickey Howard record or album, it's just, it, it really just kind of seeps into your, your, your bloodstream and you just feel it. Um, but I've always appreciated the fact that your voice was so versatile. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, and you've been able to do R and B, do gospel, do jazz, and I I love the song um, Imagination. Oh, thank you. Oh, that is one of my favorites um, from the I think it was the Country of My Love album, right? Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. And um, just so you know, Timon is the music aficionado. He gonna know the album, the date it was released, where your release party I love was. It. Yeah, I just I yeah that that song, and I I've heard it all my life, but I didn't appreciate it until I got older and around college and I was just like this like why why aren't people really recognizing this this genius of a woman that's singing these records um how do you 
How did you come to a point where you were able to basically sing any genre music? I feel like that was the case with a lot That's of the training. singers back then. That's training. Yeah. I tell you all the time. I was just telling you, I was, uh, you know, I mm. was groomed. Yeah, yeah. My parents were first, you know, what they were was gospel, and my mom listened to jazz all the time, and, and the artists were always over, and we were over there, mm. you know, because everybody came from gospel at that time. Aretha Franklin, and that's the top, but you still had Irma underneath Aretha, yeah. and you had uh, her Amazing her, artists her, her and sister, songwriters. Um, oh, my God, Carolyn, mm -hmm. and they were around all the time, and then you had H.B. Barnum, who was the pianist and what have you, the, the musical director, and everybody was around all the time. J uh, Billy Preston, James Cleveland, you know, he was in the Choir, everybody was musical and, and everybody did something different. And when I came into um, professional show business, I was trained. Um, Augie Johnson, who was the leader of the group Side Effect that I was in, uh, he was in a group called the Bob Mitchell Boys Choir, which was he was the only yeah. black kid in there. He, you know, they saw Oops, There Goes, Another Stuff, The Curve Plop, yeah. with um, Frank Sinatra. Well, he's the kid that sang there. And so his professional training. Brought me into professional training, which is why I had to take dance lessons. Mm -hmm. You know, I loved it at Fred Astaire Studio. It still excites me. Um, the singing lessons. Um, and you had to be able to sing any genre. I didn't. I tell you, I've been doing this forever. So I would do demos for people. Yeah. $400. And you come in and it might just be whatever they wrote. I remember one song was Flip My Switch. You flip my switch, boy. You should do, you should do, you do. Yeah, just think like that. You flip my switch. You know, <laughs> you know and being able to, that, that make me, made me able to sing anything. Yeah. You know, and, and that, if you work at your craft, you don't have to worry about a hit record. Mm -hmm. mm. That's right. This is what you do. There we go. Do you uh, enjoy... Uh, stage or recording? Oh, I, I like uh, I like the stage when it's good. Mm. I like that. Uh, recording used to be a lot of fun, but um, it's different now because you don't have the same elements we would be in with the with the musicians and yeah. stuff like that, and you know. <laughs> The engineers, everybody would be into it. The producer, that's great, that's wonderful. Let me hear it again. Just sing it a little higher. Oh, you know, you know, it was yeah. so fun. But and now it's like, you know, no. I did this entire album myself, and I uh, used my musicians. They're all under thirty because I wanted to prove that young people, this is what they want. Mm -hmm. And and we're continuously pouring hot lava when when they want warm cocoa. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's, it's like, this is what they want. Mm. You know what I mean? And when I, when I perform in D.C., the college kids. Yeah. It's astonishing. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, and what, it's just astonishing. One kid just cried. I never heard of you. How could this happen? And I have never heard of you. <laughs> <laughs> You're only 12, maybe that's what <laughs> Maybe that's it. Yeah. <laughs> but they're, they're the ones keeping the, like, the vinyl industry alive. It's like yeah. kids discovering uh, bands and, and blues mm -hmm. and jazz and, and, and funk and R&B albums, you know, yeah. that... that Probably they're probably walking through stores and seeing the cool covers and buying them and then rediscovering how cool the music is. And which is the reason we had covers. Exactly yeah. to entice you to go listen it's to. It's like, it. oh, that's great. That's probably very. You know, like my new cover is amazing. Yeah. For the Miha album, it's done by a, a, a young man. He's 21 years old. I think he's the next Basquiat. Um, he does w wonderful art, and I just kept seeing him on Instagram. I say, hey, you want to do my cover? It's like, yeah, okay, that's so good. It's like. Something you should print out and hang. Mm. It's so, amazing. You touched on side effect. Mm -hmm. I've always wa I've always wondered who did you all have the the first version of Georgie Porgy or was that? Um, I don't know. It, I probably was uh, Toto. Toto. Toto did it. Okay. Yeah, it was Toto. Okay. okay. I we, always got. We did two. a better version. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then I, it was more creative. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is. I, I mean, you know, because we had amazing horns. Mm-hmm. I miss Soul, horns. Soul Train Awards 1988. You won Best New Artist. Mm -hmm. What do you remember about that night? That was like a big night just... I went alone. Alone? alone. Where was the team, the entourage, the crew, the people? Because, see, I get tired of people. <laughs> and, um, uh, okay, now I, I drove my own car. I went alone. You did not drive your own car. Yeah. Soul Train Awards. Yeah. Label in the car service. I didn't want one. I love this. 
I love this. Yeah. I don't like all I don't like hoopla. It mm. gets on my nerves. I'm mean, like, I'm ADHD anyway. And and, and uh, who said that? Why are you this? My hair looks fine. But like, okay. Yeah. You know, I have one dress, you know, not a whole bunch to choose from. <laughs> I know I like that when I'm going to wear it. What's up? You know, and I'm just, I'm not, I never have been. And I think that, you know, when you're young, you don't know what why it's not going well for mm. you or whatever. Or it goes well and then it stops or whatever. And people quit or you have to fire them. But I, it's me. Mm. I can't take it. Mm. I don't like it. I feel you. Yeah, I can't hear by myself. Everybody, you know, my um, regular assistant, she's been doing some other stuff with her spirituality and everything. (laughs) (laughs) So I had to let her go do her full moon. Oh my lord! Yeah, oh, and then oh, um, uh, the, the road manager, uh, his plane, you know, was was delayed. I made the reservations wrong. Yeah, because my assistance on her spiritual journey, so I did it myself. <laughs> <laughs> so that explains that, that explains. We had a little <laughs> date mix up, but you ain't, you ain't got to know about that. But it's because you're doing it on your own. Yeah, and so yeah, and I came by myself, and my hotel is a wreck. Oh, <laughs> oh lord! But I just don't want to be bothered. Mm. I'll just I'll I'll survive the noise. I will. Oh no. Three in the morning. Why did somebody fix this? <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, next time you're in Nashville, you have people that can help you out. You okay, holler, you yeah, holler at all us. right. I'm gonna bring my people. <laughs> I'm, gonna bring, I'm gonna bring my, my spiritual <laughs> assistant next listen, time. Okay, just go over there with that now. Oh Lord. But it's a journey. I mean, artists, artists. We talk about this all the time. It's it's a, uh, it's a ebb and flow, up and down. You you with you got a crew. You don't got a crew. You having a manager. You ain't got a manager. You got an assistant. You ain't got an assistant. Up and down, up and down. And I learned that from Shaka too. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. Like over the years, thirty years, we're longer than that. Really, maybe forty. Oh, I can't remember all the assistants. And I saw one at her party. She's like, you remember me? I'm like, sure I do. <laughs> Maybe if I want I <laughs> Man yeah. Oh my goodness You, you kind of glazed over this earlier But uh, The amount of people That poured into your life Before you started Professionally uh, as, as an artist But you talked about Aretha and You mm-hmm. talked about Billy Preston And your parents being The caravan, caravan. <sighs> Can we just talk about I mean For those Some people will know this But some people won't know So break down Some of this legacy Because that's these are legends that made you a legend. What do you want me to say? I, okay, well, first of all, what was it like growing up around that? I mean, did you were you, were you aware that people around you were amazing? Man, I was aware like a mug. I couldn't believe it. I loved everybody. Oh, and when I got to go to Sammy Davis Jr. house, which we would go to sometimes because yeah. my mom's best friend was his cook, and her name was Margaret German, and... Um, Margaret had like five kids, so all of the kids we were all close and stuff. So when he would be out of town, Altavis would let us come over and swim. Mm-hmm. I couldn't swim a lick, but I wanted to go. And as soon as they get in the house, I run up to the house. I run through the house. I'm all in the bedroom in the because yeah. she was so nice to me. And I would be all in his closet and everything. He had carpets like this in his closet, like mm-hmm. you know, uh, um, Persian carpets in his closet. Just so many clothes, 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 clothes everything. He had his jewelry all on the on the. Dresser things as well. I was so excited. I just loved Sammy Davis Jr. Mm. I'm waiting for a Sammy Davis Jr. movie. It's coming soon. I it's sure coming soon. And uh, the Pointer Sisters, they would come to church. What? Wow. Oh, yeah, James Cleveland. Everybody came. Everybody wow. came to James That's Cleveland. Crazy. So when That's crazy. So when you when you get to the point where come share my love. Baby, be mine. All these hits are on the radio, and you're at the award shows, and you're seeing these people that you saw as young Mickey. Like, what is that interaction like? How are you? Like, they knew me because I've been around for a long time. Yeah. And like I told you, um, I have, you know, my parents. Yeah. You know, yeah. people say, how do you know this and this and that? Well, first of all, everybody came from Memphis, Mississippi. Alabama. Mm-hmm. Everybody. That's Tina Turner. That's my dad. Mm-hmm. They knew Tina and uh, Ike and everybody. So I'm Michelle, Clay, and Josie's daughter. Even my wow. mom and dad were not together. Mm. You know, that's Clay. That Clay to see daughter. Uh, Joe Jackson. You know, why would they take you in and make you like amazing? Because in their mind, I was royalty. Mm. 
because Josephine Howard and Claire Graham were the top of the line. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, uh, we're talking about the, uh, what's his name? Oh, everybody teasing about the temptations. Otis. <laughs> David, 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 to just see it floundering like this. So many people sacrificed. So many people did what it takes for us to have a leg to stand on. And that was just, you know, and everything was at the church. And it feels like, from what you're saying, that everybody saw you and rallied around you. They hoped for me. Yes. Mm. They they feel so powerless. Artists always thought they were powerless. But see, that makes me feel like a big part of the problem is that, especially... R and B music is is not rooted in the church anymore. I was just about to say that. Yeah, because yeah. it's a, first of all, it's it, it's a it's a house of worship. That's that's obviously what it's mm-hmm. what it's supposed to be. But it's also the community and the music and the the fellowship. It's just going through uh, a change. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not saying it's over, but no, it's just as we know it. As we know it, yeah. Or as we knew it, the church building will probably sooner than later serve its purpose, which is some place to communicate and to uh, associate and a church is a congregation to congregate. Your church building is your body. Mm -hmm. Okay, don't get confused. Wherever you go, you take God with you. Mm -hmm. Inside of you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And and the music and everything goes along. Whenever I get on stage or whenever I have a platform, I'm singing about the truth. Said worship me in spirit and in truth. truth. So therefore, what are you doing mm-hmm. when you singing and you're doing the truth and it's the truth? And you're worshiping God then and there. So it's not about that. It's about the church is growing out mm. into what it's supposed to be. Mm. Individuals. Individuals. And you got to work out your own soul salvation. And then you take that with you yeah. wherever you go. And that's. The music you're saying not coming out of church, it's just because that it's going through a metamorphosis. Mm-hmm. You know, it's been cocooned. The truth is coming out. This is an age of the truth. It's the apocalypse. Apocalypse is the truth. Yeah. It's the tearing back of the curtain. So you know the truth. So you have information. So now when when God, Jesus, uh, the spirit, the great spirit comes, mm-hmm. you can't say I didn't know the truth. Mm-hmm. Because it's right here. It's being exploit it to you every day in many different forms. And people say, oh, social media is the devil and the uh, internet is the devil. I don't think so. God said, literally, taking in knowledge of me means everlasting life. How are you going to take in knowledge if you can't take in knowledge that is there and available for you? Yeah. It's yeah. what you decide. Mm. It's what you decide if you say right now, Start talking about scripture. Scripture pop up all day long on your thing. Yeah, that's so yep. true. And you talking yeah. about Suki. She coming up all day long. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the truth. It is still it's the true. truth. It's true. It's not. You, God, you, you, we took look at God and think, oh, my God. He's just like, you know, somebody you only express the good to. You're talking about an entity that has seen it all. Mm. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Stuff so ugly, he don't even allow us to see it. Mm. That's real. I mean, really, he knows us all the way through our bowels. Okay? Yeah. There's nothing you can hide or, or anything. There's nothing you can't even, you can't say, I can't talk to God. You know, he said, because of all your ways, in all of them, acknowledge. Mm, yeah. I'm telling you, it brought me out of the crack house. I would be sitting in there like, wow. What is this? Is God going to kill me? What the hell? And somebody always protected me mm-hmm. and everything. And, and, and when I was like, I can't, you know, live like this. I don't know what this is. And I, I just was screaming out to God. And I not more, more than one or two or three times. And, and I really believe God rescued me. I really do. You what know? was that turning point to, to bring you out of that season of your life with the drugs? Like, what was that turning point? I was guilty. Hmm. I felt so guilty. Hmm. It's just like this is degradation. I I'm I don't think that I'm 
cut out for this. You know, I was really afraid. I was so scared. I was so afraid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's heavy. That is, yeah. We sound crazy. We were just talking off mic. Um, about Let's talk about this. this just, is, yeah. just about people don't often give you the credit for merging R and B and hip hop together. That's an example. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, a lot of people associate Mary J. Blige being, you know, the queen of hip hop soul. Yeah, hip hop soul. Yeah, we started it off with uh, "Till You Come Back to Me." We did a hip hop version. Yeah. And um, then I had a number one single called "Ain't Nothing in the World." Which is my first number one single over management and everything. And then we did uh, Ain't Nobody Like You, too, which was a, a merge. It was a, a sample. It was just she so She said fun. everybody being her DM, shouting her out, but no, like she's Erica, India, Mary, all of them to be showing love, but it should be more love shown to people. Because I mean, you're talking about like. Yeah, they do. They, 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 um, merging hip hop and R&B changed the game. Yeah, it did. It, get, it created a, a lane for them. Yeah. And um, I did that. And I ain't trying to be like. What's his name? But I did do that. Who, and, like uh, Soldier Boy? I did it first? Oh, let's talk about way before him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the first to ever. I'm the first one to ever do it. <laughs> <laughs> but have, have you seen Mary? Like, uh, what does she say when she, when you run the tour? Like, she shows love. Like, what like what does she say to you? I've never talked to Mary Jane. Really? What? No, no. I'm, I'm telling you about an internet situation. I've never seen her. I went uh, to this show one time, uh, and and I was at the front row, and then um, I, that's it. I wow. never. You've never spoken to Mary J. Blige. I feel, somehow in my mind, I feel like that would have happened by right. yeah. It should have happened, but people try to probably keep her away from me. They're like, don't get around that Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> She'll have you over here happy. <laughs> 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 Are there songs you hear that you're like, either I wish that, I wish I, I had that song or damn, I, um, I would have killed that song? Like, do you hear songs that you're oh, like, ooh? Oh, yeah. Like, some songs, I go, wow. yeah, I've heard a couple of songs. Like, oh, I wish I had that. that was good. But generally, the, whoever's done them have done an amazing job. Yeah. Know? Yeah. yeah. The song I remember hearing, and this is, this is not a new song, but the song I remember hearing that always reminded me of you when it came out was Nobody's Supposed to Be Here by Deborah Me Cox. too. Wow. I didn't want to say that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because then she Always. would think that I thought that, you know, that I could have did it better, which I don't think. She did an amazing job, but it really was a Mickey Howard song. It sounded like you. I was so glad. Yeah. It was, she did it, and it's done great for her. And it's yeah. a huge record, but but to, to know music and to wow. hear the voices in the that was, you I know thought what I mean? too. Great I used to be like, I should have did this song. But it was during my weird period. And I would be <laughs> driving down on the street like, they making all kind of songs without me. <laughs> that was one. That's one of them. That's one of them. And there's many. There's many. But that's definitely that one of them. Kind of, kind of piggybacking off of Claude's question. Are there some songs that maybe Sylvia might have played for you that? Absolutely, and it was songs to uh, someone else. I. I want to run to you was written specifically for me. Yo. What? And um, I was at Giant Records at the time. And uh, the girl, Cassandra Mills, who ruined my career, uh, <laughs> she vetoed it. Uh-oh. And, but I'm glad because he got an a Oscar for that song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So Whitney's I Want to Run to You. Yeah. Was, was but Come Share My Love was written for Whitney. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they thought it was too soulful. Wow. Were you and Whitney close? Yes, yeah, that. we came around the same people. We grew up. I'm telling you, her mom was Sissy, mm-hmm. and um, Sissy was in the um, Sweet Inspirations, Sweet Inspirations, and the Caravans. They, you know, yeah. they everybody love everybody. Um, Whitney would be at uh, uh, Rita's sometimes uh, in Van Nuys, where I would be at. With, you know, because Rita's trying to get the boys around some girls like uh, Clarence and Eddie. Her, she had four boys, and I used to babysit Kelf. I was, I'm telling you, this is a, I grew up in this environment. That's why I like take it easy. Mm. You're not gonna kill my ass. <laughs> Take it easy. Wow. You know, li- literally, don't let it be your total inspiration. Yeah. You know, for you gotta have life. Gotta have life. You gotta, gotta have, have life. life. What do you remember about Whitney? What's a fond memory? Like a fun story? She was really funny, and she liked me a lot, and um, we used to talk on the phone a lot. Mm. And, and um, about four years before she died, um, it was very hard, very very hard, and. Um, I just couldn't talk to her. I could not talk to her. It, it would, I would just be hurt and crying because 
she would be upset about what was going on at her house. Mm. You know, and she couldn't fix it. Mm. And then it, it's it just, there's personal stuff. Yeah. yeah. And then we sing on the phone till we go to sleep. Really? <laughs> wow. oh, she would sing on the phone. I wouldn't sing on the phone, but she would sing on the phone. Precious Lord. She always wanted me to start out. Mickey started, Precious Lord. Okay. And then she would take it and be singing. Wow. And I'll be asleep. Ah, I'm she like, knocked I'll out. Sleep. I'll sleep. Uh, Mickey, Mickey. One of the kids maybe comes like, Mom. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey. She's still be on the phone. <laughs> she's on the phone saying, Precious Lord, and she's sleep. Complete, I was, I'm like, it was really, we had a good friendship. I loved her. Yeah. It's good to have friendships, though. And that, I think that's also, like, a hard part about uh, maybe now is that it's a lot more. It's, it's, I mean, of course, it's always been a business, but it's a Technology makes you isolated. Yeah, mm-hmm. you do it. You record by yourself. You just have that camaraderie. Of, I'm gonna stop. That's what I'm saying. I'm gonna stop by the studio and see what you're doing. I'm gonna come by your show. I'm gonna stop by your rehearsal. When people want you to pay them to come write a song for everything, like you not, pay let's for get everything. together and write. You know, mm-hmm. like like it'd be all of us and we write and we make a hit. You know, but you are not gonna come write unless I pay you to come write. That's craziness. I tell these guys mm-hmm. that all the time. They <laughs> sell <laughs> just, how hard we fought. For our music yeah. Yeah. to belong to us and y'all sell tracks, that trips me out. I'm like, mm. really? Mm. I, I do you track for $400. Here you go. It's my track, right? My music. Mm. That's crazy. Mm. Yeah. That is like. Because people forget how much the music comes from just being in the room together. Yeah. Like you could be in the rehearsal and the and the, and the bass the bass player plays something that leads to the song and the background singer comes in the lead singer you see, you might do a little something that leads to a new hook or the yeah. vamp to the like and that's not just that's that's just music like I say that when I want to talk to students about like even rock bands I'm like if you're not the reason that the app is called Garage Band is because bands were in garages that's how I met yeah. do you know what I'm saying figuring it out. The group, NWA, Easy E and them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I used to, we used to rehearse in a garage across the street from Easy E's mom. And um, they would look up, look up to us, like, side effect. We were rehearsing in the garage. All my band was from Compton, my first band. And they all went on to be big musicians, working with um, Michael Jackson before he passed away, Jan, everybody. They all went on to be great mm-hmm. um, musicians that work with everybody. So you used to rehearse across the street from NWA. NWA. Why you ain't do no record with them, Mickey? What's good? Why I didn't know them. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know, know Easy E later on, okay. you know, and we yeah. had fun. He was like, they were amazing people. Yeah. They were so smart. Yeah. yeah. So smart. What did you learn from being in the group Side Effects? I ain't want to be in a group no more. <laughs> <laughs> Number one lesson. <laughs> I ain't want to be. In. I don't want to. <laughs> it's that people thing again. Yeah, I can't people. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's that people thing again. Mm-mm. Wow. So, so we got a, a, a game here, We Sound Crazy, that we like to play called Name Association. Yeah. Yes. I'm going to toss it to Chuck Harmony, who will kick mm-hmm. it off. And oh, I'm scared. So, <laughs> so Chuck, you want to get walk through the rules of how this works? Yeah, it's just when you, you say, um, I give you a name, and then you, you say... The first thing that come to mind. <laughs> it's all. It's all. It's all. In, it's all. It's innocent. all in good fun. It's all in good fun. If you okay. want to pass, you can pass. You can pass. But oh, okay. I'm gonna start off easy. Caravans. My mama knew. <laughs> um. Whitney Houston. I love her. Mm. Gerald Avert. Gone too soon. Mm. Anita Baker. Interesting. Mm. Interesting. Acting. So much fun. I was gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna say, uh, poetic justice. So much fun. Mm. I had a good time. I love Tupac. John Singleton, Tupac. There's gotta be a Tupac story. I mean, he was a brilliant actor yeah. as well. He gave me his trailer. Uh, I had a tiny part, and so when I got there, they, they had a tiny trailer, and I knew everybody. So I was like, you know. Child, the hell? I can't be in no tiny trailer. It's the four horse. You know, <laughs> what, what are you trying to do? Just take my trailer, man. Just saying, and stay here, and I'll, I'll fix it for you. I'll fix it. For you. Okay. So I'm in his trailer, and Tupac is in his trailer. He's like, you can stay in my trailer, you know. Just hang out. You know. Yeah. So he gave me his trailer. And he, yeah, and he's like, well, you want something to eat? He was so fabulous. Tupac, yeah. He was fabulous. If I walked in the room, he'd make everybody stand up. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. Wow. He was fabulous. This is Mickey Howard. Get up. You know. Like, That's, That's awesome. awesome. Oh, yeah. That's why he did. (laughs) (laughs) 
All of the yeah. decent people, I'm telling you. Wow. Yeah. They Janet, could not survive. Janet Jackson. I like Janet. Janet is so fun and an amazing talent. Joe Jackson. I love Joe Jackson. I hate to hear bad things about Joe Jackson because he never did a bad thing to me. Mm-hmm. If 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 I hadn't left his management, I wouldn't have been anything because all he did was pour money into me. I never was hungry. Uh, whatever you need, whatever the kids need. He was there for all of the, the, the two boys before the birth and after the birth, and they were just wonderful family. I never had to go through anything. All I had to do was pick up the phone and... Um, on a couple of occasions, even right before he passed away, he came and picked me up. He knew, found some baby that knows me, and they was like, uh, Melbourne Moore's birthday party, uh, we're going to pick, you know, have a limo pick you up, blah, blah, blah. Nobody mentioned Joseph. Mm. And I'm like, oh, you know, the limo waiting, I'm going to kill this thing, everything. <laughs> I finally get out there, and he's in the car, I'm like, God, nobody <laughs> told me I'm sorry. He's like, what you doing living over here? Because I bought a block in Chicago. And it was all, you know, uh, old houses and we were refurbishing. And I stayed in one of them, which I love this house so much. And it was just a weird block. And he's like, what are you doing saying here? He's like, oh, my God. And it was a good time. Cause that was the last time I saw him. I have one. Malcolm X. Genius. Gave his life. Gave his life. So many people gave his life. And and we just sitting around doing mm. shit like... <laughs> <laughs> and you were, you, you were in the movie. Uh, you played Billie Holiday in, uh-huh. in the movie. What was that? What do you remember it's about that? It's a fantastic that? experience. Yeah. All those people uh, turned out to be amazing. You know, mm. Denzel mm-hmm. and, yeah. and uh, Delroy <laughs> and uh, Robbie Reed. The casting director is my great friend. And... She just lost her parents. Shout out to you, Robbie. I love you. Um, um, Ruth Carter did the costumes. Who, mm. He's gotten two Yeah, two Oscars, Oscars from, yeah. from Black Panther, yeah. right? Yeah. We were all like family. It was so fun. Um, yeah, it was a good time. Phyllis Hyman. Ooh. I adore Phyllis. Phyllis one time thought, it's a long story, but we were on a cruise. Sherelle was pregnant. I had made her come on the cruise. You know, for vacation, and she went into labor. On and the cruise? On the cruise at seven months pregnant. And Ooh. we were in St. Martinique, you know, the, near St. Martinique. They had to get a helicopter and everything to go get her and all this stuff. So I went with her and da da da, ended up back to the boat. Phyllis thought I was gonna kill myself for some reason. I have no idea. People accuse you of the things they do. Mm. Um, she came to my room with all the police, like boat security, everything, and they opened my door. And I was in the little sweet part sleeping, and she's sit, sitting on a pop, just pops on her bed. Vicky! Oh, Vicky! <laughs> and I'm waking up, I was. Sheryl did. What happened? You know, don't kill yourself! No! Like, I'm not gonna kill myself. I'm asleep. She, yeah, she had the police and everything in there. I was like, oh my lord. And she's just appalled that I, if I smoked or drink, and, oh no. Mm. I don't want you to do this. Don't do this. Wow. Mm-hmm. You said people accuse you of things that they do. That's yeah. crazy. That's, that's wow. heavy, too. Wow. That's real talk. So I never thought about killing myself. Mm-hmm. Not then, anyway. Vesta, Vesta Williams. Oh, man. <laughs> man. I loved Vesta. Mm-hmm. Vesta would want you to know that she had... Um, a mental, I don't want to, I don't know you say mental illness today. Mm-hmm. Do they still say that? Or you say yeah. you get in trouble for that too? But she had um, a deficiency. And uh, her death was more or less caused by not being treated. Mm. And um, our industry sucks our blood and they don't give us insurance. Mm-hmm. Wow. And that was one of the issues, having to pay for insurance uh, and and things like that, and she wasn't able to have her medication. Wow. And instead of the medication that you would take for extreme bipolar or whatever it was, I forgot what you call it now, she would take an Ambien or a sleep because, like, she could get that. Mm-hmm. And, it was, it, and she died. That is so tragic. 
And I feel like the insurance issue, the mental health issue. I, I, okay, I feel like we're we're turning a corner now where the conversation can at least be had in a different yeah. way, right? I'm only saying it because she would want you to know. Yeah. Because before she passed away, we would talk for hours and hours because you can't, you know, she hallucinate. Think she hear people talking to her. She thought a, a picture was telling her to kill herself. Voices, the whole nine yards, and she was like, "I really want people to know about this because it should be." helped and it's the insurance that's insanely expensive and artists who live in a world of feast or famine should have some constant mm-hmm. yeah agreed that's true and that's still the problem there's still no there's nothing for artists not a thing Mm-mm. nothing for musicians really at all Mm-mm. it's just even when covid happened it was nope. astonishing how our units our uh unions Union. did nothing for us not a thing but expected every artist in their way whether it be online or not to be chipping in to entertain. I mean, everyone was online doing free concerts and dropping free songs and quotes and repackages, but nothing that was directly like, we understand that you're suffering. Because people, what people don't understand about COVID for musicians was that, what are we without the audience They understood to, it for Broadway. Oh, oh, there you go. They got a strong union over there. Well, well, we should too. And they merged it with SAG and AFTRA, and together we have nothing. Yeah. And they still want us to pay to be insured. You can get a better insurance outside of them mm. for the kind of money that they're asking. Yeah. And they do nothing. <laughs> nothing. I've gone to the union regarding not being paid for my music and films. Okay? Mm. I've gone to the union on several occasions about other things. They do nothing. Yeah. What does the union do for us? Somebody tell me. Questions that need answers. Oh, wow. Speaking of Broadway, have you done Broadway? Yeah. I did Dream Girls off Broadway. I did something on Broadway. I don't like... Uh, it's a hectic schedule. I don't like people. <laughs> that's the damn people. That yes. cast, that crew. <laughs> oh, you, you're the star. You know, it's a different protocol. Very different. It's different. You know, the star is really something in um, Broadway. Broadway. <laughs> Eight shows a week. It's the, Yeah. <laughs> Grueling schedule. You got to give yeah, your all. Yeah, seven shows. Seven yeah. shows, seven, eight shows. It's the same thing. Yeah. Mm. I ask you because uh, talent-wise and personality, you'd be brilliant even, I mean, then and now, you'd be brilliant on Broadway. Broadway. Yeah, I want to do like Lena Horne did when I get 65, do my one-woman show thing. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, I'll be uh, that sort of stature by then. Uh, hopefully, you'll see what happens or do something like it. You know? I love that idea. I just love it. Yeah. Because you can go through your life with all your songs, yeah. your little yeah. dances and stuff. Tell, you, tell the stories that, you, that, that mean the most to you. Mm-hmm. I like that. We sound crazy. The Esther Roll Award. is my shepherd as well it's about that time so that song is by the late great esther roll Mm -hmm. she had a gospel album called the garden of my mind oh and timon here put us onto this album (laughs) (laughs) when we first started the podcast he was playing it we're like what's that he's like but you don't know it's esther roll 1975 (laughs) 1975 on savoy savoy records yeah so it got us talking about what we're talking about today is about um Amazing entertainers that probably didn't get their full credit for all the things they did, their their full capacity as an, as an artist, and so we decided when we were doing this podcast that we want to carve out a section called the Esther Roll Black Excellence Award. Oh, which is literally just us in our humble way here, the five of us this time, nominating black entertainers that we feel like don't get the des- the credit they deserve. Um, and it can be it can be any facet of the industry, but just there's so many. We talked about some here, but there's so many. So we nominate here, and we vote, and then we give them an award. And I, and I feel like throughout the time we've been doing this, we've highlighted some pretty 
influential, important people that didn't get the love they deserved. And, and it's not about people who've passed away. It's, it, it's people, it, it can be, but it can be people that are alive now as well. But it's time for the Irbys, y'all. It's time for the Esther yeah. Black Excellence yeah. Award. We, we, what we're not going to do is nominate all these other people while we got right. Mickey Howard's table. I was, I was waiting for you to say it, Phil. I, I, I'm going to make the nomination, on the, put it on the table. I'm going to do it. It's, 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 it's she, unanimous. It's unanimous. Singer, actress, broad, I mean, she's done so much and, and has paved the way for so many, when I think about just the generation of artists that have come after you, Mickey, whether it's the Faith Evans, the Kelly Prices of yeah, the world, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Beyonce's, it's, it's Mary, the, the, the Mary, yeah, like yeah, yeah. It just the list goes on. You deserve all your flowers while you can still Absolutely. smell them. All of them. We Absolutely. love you. And some more. So, I love y'all. <laughs> so, so, so this week's, is it Absolutely. unanimous? Yeah, it's unanimous, unanimous for sure. 100%. The, the Astro Black Excellence Award goes to the legendary Mickey Howard. Yay. That was that was too easy because we have a legend in, in the building today. Um, you agree, don't you? Well, I mean, you know, there's some people like uh, Lola Falana. Mm-hmm. I think she deserves flowers. She I mean, does. Like seriously, uh, Paula Kelly. She's gone mm-hmm. now. Amazing. I think uh, Philip Michael Thomas. Yes. Mm. Calvin Lockhart. Wow. Yeah, and of course, Amos. John Amos. Wow. John, John Amos. Amos. Yeah. Wow. John Amos. Wow. Yeah, yeah. these people held up uh, under this. You know, we see what they, the front, you know, but what they did as black artists to be in an industry and a world where you're not accepted. And you have to shake off your friends talking crap about you because da 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 da, and then you gotta listen and do this and this and mm-hmm. that, and you gotta be poised. And they did yeah. that shit under the circumstances that most of us we can't stand today. Yeah, they did that. They did mm-hmm. it. Well, we we gonna love on them, but today we <laughs> loving on you. On you. Yes, for sure. <laughs> on you. <laughs> on you. It was just regular. <laughs> you deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. And, and Mickey, hip hop turns fifty this year in August. Mm. Celebration of hip hop. Hip hop fifty. How's hip hop impact? I know you were instrumental early on with merging hip hop and R&B, but what does hip hop mean to you? How's it impacted your life and career? I told y'all we had a chance. Mm. We had a chance. When people were listening, you could have said anything in the world besides, I'm gonna take this gun and shoot this nigga. Dang. Now, I, when it came out, we were all hip hop. I hit my hip hop and hit that, don't stop me rocking. Yeah, to the baby. Because we've been doing Hambo. Mm-hmm. That was hip hop. Because we stood on the corner and those corner groups, y'all heard the songs, you know, like that, the, you know, the Temptations and all of that. But before that, they were on the corner and that was hip hop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, um, oh my God, Cap Calloway mm-hmm. was hip hop. Mm hmm. It's a dictionary, the hip cat dictionary with all of the slang and everything. Yep. It was all great and gravy because it felt like they incorporated some of our deep roots mm-hmm. into music. And then it just went because they didn't have to have the, the kind of talent that it took to create the music. They just had a talent for taking it Sampling. and obscuring it and doing other things. And that's the gift in itself. But then that became the source and you lost the foundation yeah. of what this was built on and then it just build up and build up it's just like a, a an ant pile mm-hmm. sooner or later you're going to be able to blow it down it's ridiculous for musicians to be killed 20 in a month mm. yeah that's not music yeah. that's nothing not to do with us yeah i mean you know certain things creep into every profession but nobody's like appalled. Nobody's snatching their children out of hip hop. Mm. Nobody's like, you know, you're seeing these people and, and doing all the demonic stuff and the devil this and the devil that. Y'all think it's re- not real? If the devil is real, God is too. And so what you sing about matters. <clears throat> yeah, it, it brings it to you. It brings it to you. It brings it to you. I'll That's give so you a, an example. Um, I was like, when I did the Billie Holiday thing, everybody, you know, I was all into Billie Holiday growing up. Everybody called me Billie, blah, blah, blah. (sighs) Those spirits that inhabited those people are not dead. The person is dead, Mm. but the spirit that was working with them ain't dead. 
And when you call their lives and stuff into your life and all of that stuff, that stuff comes into your life. You'll talk to actors and stuff that say they portrayed this one or portrayed that one, and they couldn't shake them because the spirit that had that person now has you. Now has you. Mm. Yeah, that's that's. It's true. And when these kids are doing this stuff and they're calling, you know, these, you know, I, I've never, I've never even heard the names of so many demonic spirits and stuff in the last six months. I didn't know who Bassa was. Who was that? The cat, whatever it was. All of the, uh, uh, and, and, and the horn. The, mm-hmm. I've never seen all of this before yeah. so much. I've start. I've been having to put the names in them out of my head. Like, why yeah. am I thinking of that? I don't even know, but they do. Mm-hmm. And they're working with it and playing with it and they're bringing it to the forefront and it's bringing death, murder, and destruction to the people that listen to it, the people that create it, and it's all good. It's the same thing. When we made our love songs, what did we make, babies? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Whatever you do, you call it to you. Mm-hmm. Be careful what you say. Yeah, what those lyrics say. matter. Yeah, Whatever Shh. you do, you call it to you. Them, them titles matter. I always say the song titles, the album titles, the lyrics and songs, like that is... Those are those are spells. It's manifestation. Manifestation. Yeah. Manifestation. And it can be used for good or for evil. Exactly. That's, uh, so you were so you were picky about the kind of song like absolutely. you're very picky about absolutely. your lyrics. Absolutely. Even ain't nobody like you. I had to do it in the context of being a married person. Mm. Okay. Yeah. I can't. I can't. I mean, I'm like I'm sinning. I'm a sinner like everybody else. You know, I say bad words sometimes, and you know, certain things I don't do. You know, I'm not a gross sinner, but I'm a, I work on things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And 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 sometimes you you step back and and you gotta work, just get the two steps ahead. That's in your own spiritual life, your own spiritual walk. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it's incorporated in my life and in, mm-hmm. in my music. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's very, very, very serious to me. It's really serious. I just learned so much. So much. Did you learn, Phil? I learned a lot. And it's an honor to sit with you and to just go through the journey of, of life and career with you. Yeah, Thank you is. to our special guest this week, Mickey Howard. Make some noise. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and you're always welcome. If you're in Nashville, you have, you have friends I'm here. I'm never in Nashville. I'm so surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so surprised like, I was, I'm in Nashville. Man. Well, I, well, well, now that you know that you have some fam here, please it's come so back. It's so cool. Oh, this yeah, is please crazy. Come back. I just yeah. cannot believe. Like, I'm bugging right now. This is Mickey Howard. That's it's, so cool. It's me. Be Mickey Howard. Yeah. I hope they feel that way at the gas company next week. <laughs> <laughs> give give her a break, <laughs> y'all. Come oh on. No, because you just you go back to when I, I know I go back to when I was super young and just hearing love under new management just playing through the house. They played it so much. Or Doing ain't the, nobody like you. Sylvia Rona. Yeah. <laughs> Man. She, man, she was a genius with radio. Yeah, mm-hmm. she was a genius. Yeah. I just want to say as we conclude that the one thing we have not spoken about is that song. I love under new management Listen. is the jammy yeah. jam. Do you ever get tired of singing it? You do? It's it's, no, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a fan, it's a fan, it's a fan, it's a fan. <laughs> okay. Wait, wait, so you get tired of singing Love Under New Management? Yeah, I um, get tired of singing because everyone expects it to sound like it did before and um, this and that. And sometimes I don't have the voice for that because when you're on so your throat. It's a rangy song. Yeah, but I was hoarse when I did it. That was okay. like well in the middle range then. Now it's like I get so much anxiety before I sing it that I'm, my throat is stuck. I'm like, eh. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's that one. Yeah, I'm That's like, it. y'all, come on now. Y'all make me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure at this point, everyone's singing along with you. Because you know, everyone knows that Yeah, they song, do. Right? They do. But no, they know. Oh, no. <laughs> no they Who's singing them backgrounds? Are they killing on them backgrounds? Oh, my God. You have uh, the Sharon from uh, Love Calls. You mm-hmm. better answer. What's her name? Sharon Bryant. Sharon Bryant, girl. Uh-huh. And then there was this. Look, Timon was ready with the vinyl. Tell them. Look at him. Tell them. Okay. Oh. Let's see. Where... Mm. So many people here? died of AIDS. 80 That worked right? on that album. Mm. Oh, Lord, it was sad. They don't, have, they don't have a vocal. Oh, here it is. Cynthia Biggs, Annette Hardiman, yeah. Charlene Holloway, Gabriel Hardiman, John Peter, Sharon Bryant. Yeah. They were killing on They were killing on them back. Man, tonight. they killed it. Oh, we used to have so many great background singers and stuff. Like, you know, like when Luther came out and his singers, you know, that was the thing. There. And Aretha and everybody, you know. Oh, gosh. We hardly get enough money now to bring anybody. You know, yeah. background singers are a luxury now, right? Yeah. It is. Yeah, my nephew comes with me a lot. 
Okay. And then I have one or two people that I pull out of a DC. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Is there a song that you love to sing? Every I love to sing Solitude. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't. You. It's just also a shame again that we are stuck in um, Mickey Howard of the '80s and '90s and early 2000s. And uh, the Mickey Howard of uh, the later millennia is so much better. Mm. It's so much more to offer you. Yeah. So much. It's like food. Yeah. It's like food. Like we in the show, you know, even, we do the, the the old songs and stuff, and everybody's eh, and then we get to the new songs, and they're like, blown away. Like, this is a new feeling. Yeah. Yeah. I want to feel like this. Why don't we have our class? What yeah. like our Nancy Wilsons? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who Nancy are they Will now? I love mm. Nancy Wilson. I mean, I'm talking seriously. Yeah. Well, th this, that's what this, pa this, this podcast is for, is to at least highlight the fact that we should be not overlooking these pockets of important music, it, especially when I'm it comes... I'm saying reach out for your culture. Reach Find your mamas, your aunties, well, your uncles, your yeah, cousins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Reach out for your culture because it's here. It's here. It's, it's here. here. And, you're, and, and, and you need to, your children, everybody needs to know that it's okay to have feelings. Mm -hmm. Little yeah. boys, like my my grandson, listen. Uh, 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 uh. He was two. Yeah. yeah. You know, he just loved the way it made him feel. He can yeah. play it over and over and over. And there's a kid on the, on the internet that they're playing um, Teddy Pendergrass. He's a little boy, baby. So, I want to hear Teddy Pendergrass. Teddy Pendergrass. <laughs> now, now little, kid, little kids will absorb anything you give them. Shh. And it's important to feed them stuff. To feed them because good stuff. Because that's, you say, oh, the boys, they, they feel like they can't cry. Why? You don't have to be the only example of them having emotions. It, we recorded it for you. Yeah. You put the words Introduce to it. Introduce them to it. It's therapeutic. It's important. Yeah. It yeah. really is. That's true. Music is still the healer. And we don't bring our kids to concerts. Yeah. No. Everybody. <laughs> bring them to the club. Yeah. The wineries are perfect. It's a restaurant with fabulous music. Uh, uh, all of the clubs I play, the Blue Note, everything. Bring your children. That's what we used to do. Our parents did. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And my mama certainly did. Oh, my God. If you get to see Bobby Blue Bland, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. It's important. Don't feel like don't take your children. It's important. You got to you gotta educate and share the, share the gift in the art. Share the culture. 100%. Share the culture. Share the culture. Culture is important. Yeah. Because then you have something that you know is like you. Yeah. Pay it forward. Pay it forward. For everybody. Man, thank you again, Mickey Howard. Yeah. Uh, make sure uh, you follow us on all platforms at We Sound Crazy and WeSoundCrazy.com. Also, thank you to our partners at the National Museum of African American Music, BlackMusicMuseum.org, and also Visit Music City. Mm -hmm. yes. You in Nashville, VisitMusicCity.com. Yes. yes. These quilts, do you know what that's about? The quilts? Uh -huh. Um. Um, and I'm done. I'm gonna go. This is what I'm talking about your culture. Your culture. <laughs> your culture. <laughs> you don't know none of that. I got to go. Vicky <laughs> <laughs> Howard, you, what song should we leave out with this week? Number one fan. Okay, let's do it. I'm y'all's number one fan. Number one fan. Thank until you. Until next time. time. Thank y'all. Thank you. Learn about your culture. Thank you. Thank you so much. Until next week, we sound crazy. We out of here. Appreciate you. Appreciate you.